What's up guys, it's Michael from iPlayTech.com. Today I'm going to be comparing the iPad mini screen resolution to a few other products out on the market. So for those of you guys who don't know, the iPad mini has a resolution of 1024 by 768 with a three or a 163 PPI. Now the thing we're going to be focusing on in this video is strictly the PPI. We're not going to be focusing on the actual resolution because the bigger a screen is, the higher the resolution is. The smaller the screen is, the lower the resolution will be. The only thing we're going to be focusing on is the pixels per inch because the pixels per inch stands for uh, PPI, which basically, obviously, that's kind of self-explanatory. So how many pixels per inch are in the actual device? So the iPad Mini again has a 163 PPI. And now we're going to be comparing it to the Retina Display iPad. Now the iPad, the regular full-size iPad, has a 264 PPI. Now I'm going to get my macro lenses out here, and we're going to try to zoom in as far as we can and see a difference, because you will definitely notice a difference. In person, it's easy to tell. On camera, it's a little bit harder. So let me go ahead and get my macro lens here, and we'll take a look at the resolution of these two iPads. All right, so on the left, we have the iPad with Retina Display, and on the right, we have the iPad Mini. Right now, I have the settings icon pulled up, and what we're going to do is zoom in with the iPad with Retina Display. Go ahead and let me focus here. As you can see, you can hardly see any pixels at all. Now let's go ahead and move over to the iPad Mini here. As you can see, the icon's a little bit smaller, but you can also see that the edges aren't as sharp, and if you look very closely, you can see some pixels. So the edges aren't as sharp, the word that says settings is not as clear. Go ahead and go back over to the retina display now, you can see how much clearer it actually is. Now, although you guys may be thinking, oh, well, in real life, you're not going to notice that, I will tell you right now, from personal experience, you definitely will notice a difference uh, in real life if you go from a retina display device to the iPad mini. Uh, whether or not you want to do that is your choice, but I will tell you, you will eventually get used to it. Uh, as long as you pretty much don't have any other Retina device, uh, you will eventually get used to it. But those is the, uh, here's the 300 and, well, excuse me, the iPad has a 264 PPI, and the iPad Mini has a 163 PPI, and you can see the difference right there. All right, so now we're going to be comparing the Nexus 7 to the iPad Mini. Now, the Nexus 7 has a 216 PPI, while the iPad Mini only has a 163, like I said before. So, uh, theoretically, the Nexus 7 should look better than the iPad Mini. All right, so now on the left, we have the Nexus 7, and on the right, we have the iPad Mini. Now, because these two devices are running different operating systems, it's hard to find an icon that's the same, especially because the iPad Mini over here is running the stock version. I haven't downloaded any apps. But what I'm still going to do is just zoom in like I did with the last clip, and you guys will hopefully be able to see a little bit of the difference. But uh, in real life, I will say it's kind of hard to tell which one is actually better. They both pretty much look the same, uh, but spec-wise on paper, the Nexus 7 is supposedly better. So in there, you can't really see any pixels. If you look real closely, you can kind of see some in like the blue of the settings icon here, but that's only if you look real closely. Move over to the iPad Mini, however, though, you can definitely see uh, the pixels. Now, in real life, is this really that big a deal? Not really. It's kind of hard to actually tell. Again, the Nexus 7 has a 216 PPI, and the iPad 3 has a 163 PPI. Uh, and it's not too big a difference, uh, but I'm, I would suppose if you're using like the same exact app, uh, like maybe you're using, I don't know, Angry Birds for example, you might be able to tell a little bit of a difference depending on what type of eye you have, you know, if you have a real sharp eye, you might be able to tell a, bit, a little bit of a difference. But in real life, I could not tell that much of a difference, but on paper, there is definitely a difference. Now the last thing we're going to be comparing is the iPhone. The iPhone has a whopping 326 PPI. That is very, very high for a device. So 326 PPI versus 120, 163 PPI. All right, so now we have the iPhone 5 on the left and the iPad mini still on the right. Just to recap, the iPhone 5 has a 326 PPI, which is the highest thing out of everything in this video so far. And the iPad mini has a 163 PPI. If you guys haven't heard that enough, uh, well, you should probably get your hearing checked because I've said the iPad mini PPI many times now. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and just take a look at everything. I apologize for the shaky camera. It's hard to be very still when you're filming up this close, even when you do have a tripod because sometimes I bump it. So there's the iPhone 5, and today we're going to, or this time we're going to be comparing uh, Safari. And you can see the iPhone 5 resolution is absolutely phenomenal. I cannot see any pixels at all. It's just as sharp as the iPad, but uh, on paper it's better. You can't really tell the difference between the iPad and the iPhone because they both look the same even though the iPhone does have a higher PPI um, and taking a look at the iPad mini definitely a big difference so does retina display make a difference 
Definitely. Does the iPad mini look bad? No, the iPad mini just doesn't look as good as it could. I would assume in a either in the iPad mini second generation or third generation, we will eventually see an iPad mini with retina display. It's just got to happen. They can't just they won't always just keep a, a non HD screen. Uh, but will you be happy if you get an iPad mini? Uh, probably. You'll get used to it. Like I said, if you're coming from a retina display, you'll definitely notice a difference though. But otherwise, that's it guys. This was just a quick screen comparison, screen resolution comparison from the iPad mini compared to the iPad Nexus 7 and the iPhone. Unfortunately, I don't have really any other devices that I could compare it to because all my other devices uh, pretty much have about the same resolution. I have the iPod Touch 5th generation, but that has the same resolution as the iPhone 5. I have an iPod Nano, but I mean, that resolution is just terrible. But if you guys are looking to get an iPad mini and you're worried about the screen resolution, I would not be too worried. If you want to hold out a year, I'm sure in a year or two, we'll see a Retina Display iPad mini. But for now, the screen resolution is pretty good. It's better than the iPad 2. It's not as good as the iPad 3 or the iPhone or the Nexus 7, but it's still pretty good. Let me know what you guys thought about the iPad mini screen resolution down in the comments below, but otherwise that's it. If you guys missed my other videos, I have about three, I want to say, videos of the iPad mini up right now, an unboxing, a camera test, and I believe a size comparison. So go ahead and watch those videos if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.